But tonight we're going to talk how to identify and replace toxic fats. Imagine if terrorists made a bioagent that would spread throughout the United States and claiming the lives of nearly 400,000 Americans each year. That would be one person every 33 seconds, every hour, around the clock, year after year. And this pandemic outbreak would be front page news of the internet and the newspaper. The government would find the finest and best qualified medical doctors and scientists to research the problem and help to save lives. But I have good news for you. This plague can be stopped, not in the laboratory, but right in our grocery stores, in our kitchens, in our dining rooms. And as, as for weapons, we don't need to use vaccines or antibiotics. A simple fork is going to do. So what are we talking about? What is this terror? What is this bio uh, pandemic that we're talking about? It is coronary heart disease that's killing 400,000 Americans every single year. And it's a, it's a disease that's affecting everyone who is uh, eating the sad American diet, the standard American diet. It's a uh, number one killer in the United States of America. As you can see, uh, the mortality in the United States, coronary heart disease is number one. Lung diseases are number four. I don't have the whole list here, but um, then uh, there's a surprise disease, quote unquote, which I will share with you another time, that claims 225,000 lives a year. And then the brain diseases like stroke and Alzheimer and diabetes and high blood pressure, all of those are related to a uh, toxic high fa fat intake in our diet. And the thing is that this process happens over decades. It happens slowly until eventually kills many of our loved ones. You may say, you know what? These are just statistics in general, and this doesn't affect me, so what? But when you think about heart disease, think of someone you know, a friend, someone at work, maybe a loved one in your home, maybe a neighbor who has had to struggle with heart disease and who at last may not have won the battle. I think of a neighbor uh, in California, and every time I visit my parents, I see her. She was a vivacious, healthy woman, and uh, she was taking care of her husband who passed away, and she was exercising and walking and positive, and one day she got Alzheimer's disease, and it went you know, slowly and greater and greater until you would see her walking aimlessly in her yard or in the neighborhood. And she would come over to talk, longing for friendship and fellowship. And we would hear the same story again and again. And it just breaks your heart. And you know, when I see people like that, I think, what can I do to help? How can I prevent my loved one getting this disease? How can I prevent myself from getting it? So this is what this lecture is about. It's about you. It's about your friends. It's about your loved ones who, whose lives we want to save and prolong so we all can have a better quality of life. Now, if you're looking uh, to revamp your eating habits and to improve your health, the greatest place to start is not with sugar and with carbs, which a lot of these fad diets tell you about, but the place to start is with fats. And how many of you have heard of the famous China study of Dr. T. Colin Campbell? Yes. He and his team investigated the eating habits and the incidence of chronic diseases among hundreds and thousands of rural Chinese over three years. One of the villages had half a million people. And the interesting thing that happened, that not a single death, occurred among these people from coronary artery disease among men under 65. Now, 
another researcher had looked in Africa in the 1930s to 1940s in the continent of Africa in the missionary hospitals, they had none of the Western chronic diseases that we have. And they were way across the continent. And while we were having these Western diseases, they were not having them. So what did the Chinese and the African diets have in common? They were very different diets, but there is something that the Africans and the Chinese had in common. And what was that? Plant foods, that's right. Uh, Plant-based grains, vegetables, legumes. And the other thing they had in common, they had a cholesterol under 150 milligrams per deciliter, their blood cholesterol. So, that, so what that means is People who have cholesterol under 150 uh, milligrams per deciliter don't have heart disease. Heart disease is a choice of what we put in our mouth. It's interesting that, have you ever wondered how early co cholesterol and, uh, starts appearing in the arteries of young men? They, they looked at Korean young, young men who were in the army and at 22 years of age, they had plaques of cholesterol. And right now, with our children being overweight and obese, there are fatty streaks in nearly all American children by the age of 10. So if you have grandchildren, and if you have children, you want to share this with them, because you want them to be around. In fact, um, researchers are saying that our children will die younger than we because of the way they're eating and they're living. So what does cholesterol do to an artery? Now here's mo moderate uh, atherosclerosis in this artery. And usually, even though this is um, somewhat occluded, there are no signs of disease, of the disease until the artery is 90 to 95% plugged. So you may have a cholesterol that's 300 milligrams in your blood and you may feel fine. But when it's 90 to 95% plugged, that's when you have a problem. So one of the best ways to reduce the buildup of this fat and cholesterol inside your arteries is to reduce your saturated fat, your trans fat, and your cholesterol intake. And I'm gonna show you um, how to do that. So here is another one. Uh, this is a cross section of a right coronary artery of a 34 year old male who died in the cardiac ICU. So he still had some, a little bit of space there, but it was not enough. It killed him. So um, according to Dr. William Roberts, who is the editor-in-chief of the American Journal of Cardiology, the only risk factor for atherosclerotic pack, uh, plaque buildup is cholesterol, cholesterol in your blood. And I was wondering, um, you know, since we have heart disease to such a great extent, and since we're plugging up our arteries, where is it coming from? Where is the saturated fat coming from? And here we are. Uh, we have the average person will chomp down 7,000 animals during their lifetime. Um, 11 cows, 27 pigs, 2,400 chickens, 80 turkeys, 30 sheep, and 4,500 fish. So this is uh, where our saturated fats are coming from. And this is obviously the problem. Now in countries that are poor and they can't afford this, they're eating the plant-based diet. And they're keeping their arteries clean and they're living better and longer. So here's a cholesterol chart. Now if you go to the doctor's office, how many of you have had your cholesterol checked lately? A few of you. Do you know what your cholesterol is? You know what it is? Good. One person does. How about the rest of you? 
You're not sure, okay? Well, it would be good if you, I should have given you a copy of this chart, but it, it's good if you know your cholesterol. Here, if you look at the total cholesterol, it should be um, desirable is less than 200. Um, but the optimal is 145 to 165. Remember the Chinese, the rural Chinese, they had it at 150 and their arteries were clean. But the thing is when you ask your doctor, how's my cholesterol? And he'll look at, at it and let's say yours is 200. He'll say, oh, it's fine. It's within normal range. But 200 is already on the upper level of the normal range, okay? So you want to keep it under 200. And um, if you, oh, th this, uh, this chart doesn't show you a cholesterol of 220, 240, 260 is way off the charts. And that's when people are getting their heart attacks. The triglycerides should be between 330 and 150. These are your fats that are floating in the blood. They should be less than 100 and optimal less than 50. And then your HDL cholesterol, which is the good cholesterol, which takes out the bad, bad cholesterol out of your blood, should be um, greater than 60. If you're exercising, it can be even in the 80s. I think mine is 85 or so. Uh, the LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, should be less than 100 and optimally 70. Now, if you do a ratio between the uh, total cholesterol divided by HDL cholesterol, you get a ratio which is, uh, gives you the ratio of heart disease. So this is an idea of what the range should be. So let's talk about these unhealthy fats. You've seen saturated fats. It's what makes up the white uh, steak marbling through the chunk of bacon or steak, right? It's what makes milk, whole milk, creamy and, and cheesy, uh, and cheese waxy. And if you could look at a fat molecule under the microscope, and I have some here if we have time, it would be completely saturated with hydrogen. That means all the carbons are saturated with hydrogen atoms. And so you really don't need to be a chemist in order to spot saturated fat. It's hard at room temperature. It's, it's things like lard and cheese and dairy products and meats and so forth. So how do saturated fats affect our health besides our heart? We already said that the cholesterol and saturated fats are especially damaging uh, <coughs> to the heart and to the arteries. So it, they cause heart disease and stroke, high blood pressure, diabetes. Many people think that sugar causes diabetes, but one of the main factors is a high fat diet, especially saturated fats. And cancers, many of the cancers, and more and more they're finding out, are related to a high intake of saturated fats, like bowel, prostate, breast cancer, colon, rectal, and other cancers. And of course, it causes obesity. Now, trans fats are an artificial fat, so it's less likely to spoil. And the manufacturers have come up with this product and they use it in processed foods to improve taste, texture, and shelf life. It's an ideal fat for frying fast foods. Now, uh, there are organizations that have put pressure on the government to get this out of our food supply, and now trans fats are listed on the labels. But even though they're listed, even if it says zero, you could be having some, and I will show you how that works. Um, here are some of the foods, the pastries, the snack foods, the french fries. Um, they are all full of 
trans fats. And when you're looking at labels, make sure you look at the ingredients. If it says partially hydrogenated, that means it has trans fats, even though the label will say zero trans fats. So basically, it's hidden sneakily. And the way they hide it is it, it has 0 0.5 uh, grams or half a gram of trans fats. They don't have to report it, OK? So if, if a cookie has half a gram of trans fats, they don't have to report it. They say it's 0. But do you ever stop eating just one cookie? I can have four or five or six. So before you know it, you can have three grams of trans fat from your cookies or from your piece of cake or french fries, whatever you're having. Now I read that the latest thing is they're trying to totally eliminate trans fats from the food supply within the next few years. But again, if a company specifically asks the FDA if they can use it, they may give them permission. So there's always a way that they get around things. So <coughs> this is a statement by the, by the FDA. It says, artificial trans fats in processed foods are not generally recognized as safe, safe for use in human food. That means grass, uh, a grass food, which means not generally recognized as safe. Their elimination could prevent 20,000 heart attacks, 7,000 deaths from heart disease each year. So you can see here, this is a study that was done of 667 men who were aged from 64 to 84. And the ones with the highest graph there, they had the most trans fatty acids in their diet, and they had two times the risk of coronary heart disease as those that had very little trans fats. So it doubles your risk of heart attacks. Now this guy still thinks he can do it. He says, I eat cheap, greasy food so I can save for my cardiologist bill in the future. I hope you don't think like that. <clears throat> what are some other effects of saturated fat and trans fats on the body? It impairs our mental function. It can interfere with our brain glucose metabolism. It can cause a general decline in energy. I've met people you know, that I've worked with to help them change their diet, and they're always tired. They don't have energy. Um, but they're using a lot of these. They don't cook. You know, they, they go to fast food places. They don't eat fresh foods. They eat canned food. They eat packaged foods. They eat dead foods that are loaded with these fats, saturated trans fats with sodium and sugar. Of course, there's no energy. So um, also. Saturated fats and trans fats increase the risk of a blood clot, increase your bad cholesterol, and decrease your good cholesterol. This is an interesting study by Dr. Golomb. She looked at 694 men who were less than 45 years old, and she gave them a dietary survey to see how much, uh, what kind of food they're eating, and then she gave them a word recall test. And the results showed that those who had um, at one gram of trans fats, that would be like two cookies, OK? Let's say the cookie had half a gram each, had worse memory. 0.76 fewer words were recalled, or that's 11 to 12 fewer words were recalled because they were eating more trans fats. So it has such a powerful impact on our brain. So Time Magazine had an interesting article about this, uh, reporting her findings. And they said, eating away at your memory. <laughs> Trans fat consumption has been linked to, now this is another study she did, the same Dr. Golomb. She said, um, fat consumption 
trans fat consumption has been linked to higher body weight, more aggression, worse mood, and heart disease. She says, I tell my patients, while trans fats increase the shelf life of foods, they reduce the shelf life of people. <laughs> now, I don't want my shelf life decreased. Do you? Definitely not. Or of my loved ones. So that's why I cook from scratch. And that's why we have these classes. You know, because we want to show you a better way. You know, our life is precious. And we want to enjoy it to the fullest. And so you, we want to put all the good, healthy foods into our body. Um, do you want to know how to avoid dementia and preserve your memory? Here is what a neurologist tells us. He says, I'm frequently asked how to prevent dementia and preserve a memory. With this and other evidence, I can confidently counsel my patients to avoid food with high trans fats. After all, sharp minds run on lean diets. Don't you love that? Sharp minds run on lean diets. Now what about more negative effects of uh, these type of fats? Decreased alertness and concentration. Um, increased cognitive impairment and increased depression. Now here are some most common sources of trans fats in the American diet. So what they're saying is the average American consumes about 1.3 grams of artificial trans fats each day. Margarines are the lowest. Cookies have from zero to three and a half grams. Frozen pies, zero to four and a half grams. Frozen pizza, zero to 5.0 grams. And that's why I want to show you some healthy pizza. Savory snacks, you know, chips and all this kind of stuff has, is pretty high, up to seven grams of trans fat. Now let's look, where is the saturated fat hiding? We have total fat on the left and saturated fat on the right. Your hamburger patty uh, is 21 grams fat. And eight of it is saturated. Uh, hot dog is 13 and 5, sausage 10, bacon is 50, three slices of bacon is 50 grams fat. You know how many calories this is? One gram of fat is how many calories? Does anyone know? It's nine calories. So five times nine is how much? 450, right? Yeah. 50 times 9, yeah, 450. So cured bacon, three slices, is 450 calories, just from the fat. And it is, oh, that's all it is. It's fat. It doesn't have carbs for sure. Okay, and then bacon turkey has less. Fried chicken, still quite a bit, 26. And this is just for three ounces, okay? And you know how big is three ounces? It's the size of my palm. It's a small piece. Most people have two of them, two of them, right? Skinless chicken has three. Fried fish, three ounces, 11 grams. And then cheese, now look at cheese. One ounce of cheese is six grams. Now who stops it at an ounce? How many of you like cheese? You know, I, um, I'm a vegan now, but I came from Eastern Europe and cheese was a big thing. And I rem remember coming here as a kid I was 12, we would make cheese sandwiches and have two, three slices, you know. And so later on, I, um, I liked it a lot. It was difficult to give up, but the evidence was very strong. And so I, I changed. It's possible to change. Um, so here we are. Cheese is more fattening than bread or potatoes, okay? 70% of the calories come from, from, in cheese come from fat. It has two times the calories found in sugar. And guess what? These calories are stored on your belly, on your thighs, under your chin, everywhere. How much are we eating? Notice, in 1970, we were eating about um, 12 pounds. 
Actually, in the 1920s, we were eating two, three pounds of cheese a day, okay? When people were working on the, har on the farm and working really hard. But look what happened, 2010. How much are we eating now? Do you see that? It's about 33 pounds of cheese per person per year. You add up the calories. You love cheese, but I'm sorry, it does love you back. Those are the facts. The sooner you accept this, the sooner you will conquer your weight and your heart disease and diabetes and high blood pressure and other problems. You know, you may say, no way, Lillian. That's impossible. Well, you know, I used to feel that way. I used to love cheese also, but it is possible because there are ways that as we learn and reason from cause to effect, something starts happening and we start ch changing the way we think. Um, as, it, as cheese is digested, it releases a special chemical called casomorphine. And in the brain, these chemicals, they attach to the same opiate receptors as heroin and morphine. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm nowhere saying that cheese is as mind-numbing as illegal uh, narcotics, but like heroin and the other drug, it, it has opiates that affect your brain. And um, casomorphines have a little subtle brain effect and it keep, can keep you hooked. That's why some people, you know, they want more and more cheese or, or, or they want more and more, you know, they want cheese pizzas and lasagnas and uh, cheesecake and it's kind of like chocolate, okay? The same kind of effect. But the problem is what's bad for the heart is bad for the brain. <coughs> the saturated fats and trans fats cause your body to make more cholesterol, like we said. The plaques form in the arteries of your heart and in your brain. These plaques gradually pinch off the passage of the blood, which increases your blood cholesterol. And cholesterol plays a role in forming beta amyloid plaques, which are protein plaques, which lead to Alzheimer's. So you can see on the, on the left are the neurons, the brain cells in the normal brain. But on the right, do you see these little brown kind of specks? Those are the amyloid fra fragments that have cholesterol and that cause uh, Alzheimer's problem. Although cheese may smell like old dirty socks and have more saturated fat and cholesterol and sodium than a steak, people still flock to the cheese deli to get their high. And by the way, the smelly socks, I thought that was, I've heard people say that, you know, and I thought this is just a joke, but I actually found research that there are enzymes that make it smell that way, and it does smell like dirty socks. Some of them anyway. <laughs> so it's scientific. <laughs> so here is, um, the cholesterol connection. Notice that if you're, oh, that's, a, uh, cholesterol is less than 200, your Alzheimer risk is basically zero. If it's, that was a mistake. If it's 220, your Alzheimer's risk is 25% higher. And if it's 250 or more, it's 50% higher. And this was from a research study done on 9,800 Kaiser Permanente subscribers in California who had their cholesterol checked in the early, early uh, 40s. So here's another study to show you. Um, saturated fat per grams per day. The first graph they're taking in 30, 13 grams of saturated fat per day, and their relative risk is one. 
and then when they are doubling it to 25 grams of saturated fat, their risk is 2.3. So it doubles by double intake of saturated fat. So what is the solution? According to Dr. Roberts, editor-in-chief of the American Journal of Cardiology, he says your, col your LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, needs to be less than 70. And he says you have only one, two solutions. Number one, take statin, statin drugs. So he says, okay, we can put 100,000 Americans on statin drugs. Um, or you can give people a diet centered around plant, plant foods. He said that if your LDL cholesterol is less than 70 milligrams, you're virtually heart attack proof. So, you have a choice. There is no compulsion, <laughs> okay? You can choose statin drugs or you can choose a healthy plant-based diet. Here are your choices. But he says, this is the same doctor, he says, if you choose statin drugs, you have a potential for liver, liver or muscle damage, memory loss, and confusion. Those are some of the side effects that people can get. Increased risk for developing diabetes. Long-term use may double women's risk of invasive breast cancer. So it's either a healthy plant-based diet or statin drugs. And now there's a new drug they're coming up with. It's your choice. But the good news is that plant-based diets lower your cholesterol just as effectively as statin drugs. And you know, there are no side effects. There are some good side effects. And the good side effects are less cancer, less diabetes, protection of your liver, and protection of your brain. And of course, your heart. Now, can lifestyle change and reverse heart disease? How many of you have heard of Dr. Dean Ornish? He's the famous, you have, right? He is, um, he wrote an amazing article in the famous journal in, 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 in England, The Lancet, in July 21, 1990. And after doing research, he, he found this. He showed that 91% reduction in angina attacks within just a few weeks of placing his patients on a plant-based di pl plant diet with both with exercise and without exercise. So what does that mean? That a plant-based diet, even if you don't exercise, will reduce your angina attacks by 91%. It is that powerful. Uh, the only thing that he gave them was egg whites and non-fat milk. The diet was 70% complex carbs. But that was not all. It, it was a lifestyle. He gave them a lifestyle. So it was not only diet and exercise, but stress control. They had to have stress control. They were not allowed to smoke. They were not allowed to drink alcohol and no caffeine. Okay. So those are the results that he got. And this is the New START program that we've been telling you about, nutrition, exercise, water, um, temperance, fresh air, rest, and um, so now let's look at the healthy fats which protect you from heart disease and do all kinds of wonderful things for your body. The polyunsaturated fats are essential for life. We have linoleic acid, which is all your most vegetable oils, okay, like sunflower oil, safflower oil, corn oil, um, all vegetable type of fats. Then we have the alpha linolenic acids, which are your omega-3 fats, and this is where your olive oil comes in. Um, also, here we have the seeds. Uh, the polyunsaturated fats are your safflower seeds, sunflower seeds, and um, all those type of seeds, flax, 
is an omega-3 fat. That these are all very, very healthy for you. And then we have the monounsaturated fats. And that includes your almonds and your walnuts and your cashews, um, your olives, canola, avocados, and so forth. Now, just because these are good for us, does that mean we can eat like a cup full? You know, <laughs> you go to the grocery store and you can buy like nuts, cashew nuts, like in a can, and there's like a cup or two or, or three, you know. Does that mean we can eat all of that? No, it's, the measurement is a quarter of a cup. So if what you can hold in your, the palm of your hand of the healthy fats, and you want to have a variety of them. And you want to eat nuts and seeds daily from all these varieties. At least five servings of nuts per week for best health. Better yet, five, uh, seven days a week. And that includes peanut butter, natural peanut butter with nothing in it, just peanuts, almond butter, and tahini, which is the butter from sesame seeds. Here is a Harvard nut study. This is interesting that women who ate nuts five times a week had a 35% lower risk of heart disease than women who seldom or never had it. And this is what you can use. These are different type of spreads that you can use instead of the unhealthy ones. Here are ways to reduce your saturated fat intake. On the left, we have a high fat meal. There's the hamburger, the mayo, the cheese, french fries, ketchup, 27 grams of fat. Okay, this could be your lunch, right? Wouldn't you say? But on the right, you could do the same thing with a garden burger, non-fat cheese, oven baked potato, ketchup, a glass of almond milk, only five grams of fat, of saturated fat. So it's, you substitute. You can substitute and you can get the same results. And then on the right, you have a lot more fiber, a lot more phytochemicals and so on. So here, add it all up. Breakfast, uh, one egg with bacon, one grilled cheese sandwich, and a little bit of meat, maybe three ounces, 25 grams of saturated fat. Or you can have a glass of milk, salmon, and half a cheese pizza, and you get just as much fat. So these are the things we want to watch. So the good news is you, you may say, you know what? Sure, I can change my lifestyle, do all those things you're talking about, but I would be miserable for the rest of my life. I've heard people tell me that. I'd rather die sooner than stop eating meat and stop smoking and getting rid of the things I love, my cheese. Well, Dr. Ornish wondered if his participants were missing the foods that they once had. And you know what? He found a very, very interesting fact that they were not missing the foods, that they were happier, that they were uh, more fulfilled, that they weren't so moody, they were not depressed, and they found other enjoyments to make them happy. So it's possible. So the good news is we're going to teach you some how to make a delicious vegan pizza. Another time we'll teach you macaroni and cheese and a good lasagna and grilled cheese sandwiches without with our kind of cheese, and healthy mozzarella cheese, and healthy veggie burger, hamburgers. <coughs> Do you recognize this man? Anybody here recognize this man? No? Some of us uh, more senior ones? No? Okay, if I put this up, do you recognize this man? Yes, Dr. Spock, right? He was a pediatrician who was famous and he would give us the baby care advice and dieting and anything you can imagine. So 
you may be thinking, you know what? I'm too old to change. It may be good. I've done the damage. I'm too old to change. Well, this man was 80 years old when he started feeling pretty lousy. He went to his doctor. Um, and before that, he was a healthy man. He actually won the Olympic gold medal uh, with the Yale rowing crew in 1924. Um, he went to the New England uh, Medical Center and told the doctor his problems. He had a bunch of issues. And the doctor said, stay at home, buy a wheelchair, install an elevator. You have lived a good life <laughs> at 80. He wasn't happy with that advice. With the help of his wife and a nutritionist, they looked at his diet. Out went the meat. They threw out the cheese. They threw out the junk food. In came the vegetables. In came the whole grains. And within days, he was sleeping better. Within days, he was feeling better. And so he was happy. But one day, he thought, we're going out to eat. I'm going to have a steak. I'm going to treat myself. I've been so good. So he got a steak, and he wasn't feeling good. He was feeling sick. And he was losing his energy. And he said to his wife, forget this. This is it. I'm going back to the old program. I'm going to go to the plant-based diet. And <clears throat> so he went back to the New England um, Medical Center. And the doctors were stunned at his dramatic improvement after these life-changing experiences as he became an advocate for a healthful diet. He talked to the federal government. He said, you know what? You shouldn't be pushing milk on children. That's why they're developing type 1 diabetes, because they're drinking milk. And research has shown this. And so after the age of 80, he rewrote Baby and Child, the Baby and Child Care book and included a section on the value of a plant-based diet and getting away from meat and milk, foods that once he thought were essential for children. He pushed the federal government to change its dietary policies. He was mentally clear to the last day of his life. He uh, died a little before his 95th birthday. 15 extra years with this dietary program. This works. That's why I believe in it. And that's why I would like you to be exposed to it so you can make a choice. Now you may be thinking, how, how will I do this? And is there any other evidence? I would like to point you to this evidence in the Bible. It says, it's in Leviticus 7.23, speak to the children of Israel saying, you shall eat no manner of fat, ox or of sheep or of goat. This is way before science ever discovered saturated fats and trans fats and cholesterol. Our creator knew what is the best fuel for our body. And he says, don't eat it. It's not good for you. That gives me such a thrill to know how much God loves me, that he is interested in what I put in my body. And he wants me to feel my utmost best. And so. As this family here, you have the children, you have the grandparents, the parents. You know, we all make choices. We can make a choice to eat healthy the way our body was designed by our creator and the way science is showing us to eat. A low-fat, um, plant-based diet with lots of fruits and vegetables. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Thank you.